off attacks with your Zorak V-Stars, but man, those are rough prizes from Kevin Kinney. And when you have a deck that's so reliant on very specific things falling into place, you're even more susceptible to these just completely <laughs> nutty prizes. But as we jump in, Kevin is able to start off with the Hizuian uh, Decidueye V in the active. So this is another attacker hopefully he can pivot to maybe put in some work before Ryan Harris gets too far out ahead. Yeah, the Hisuian Decidueye V, not probably something Kenny, uh, Kevin would love to start in this matchup. It's really not the strongest of attackers, mostly here for that close quarters shooting attack, dealing 100 damage and not affected by effects. So hitting through the mill tank, which traditionally Zoark doesn't have a great answer up against. So that was the reason for playing the card this weekend. So if Kevin has hit any mill tanks. I'm sure he had a pretty reasonable time against them, being able to hit for Great. weakness and take them out in just one shot. I'll take a moment now to check the prize cards, though. He's getting the bad news yeah. here, Jim. But I'm I, I'm actually eyeballing this mountain hunt as well. Search your yeah, deck for yeah. two cards, one fighting energy, get a star birth. <laughs> yeah, it can it can be a decent little setup attack in the right situation. It's mm -hmm. going to be hard to weave it in, I think, whenever your energies are going to be so much more valuable than normal uh, because you have to rely on attaching two energies to start attacking unless you can find your one single copy of Double Turbo. Three Double Turbos in the, oh my goodness, in the prize is going to be so terrible for Kevin to get off of the ground. Maybe Ryan Harris will dangle a Cramorant or a Comfy where Kevin can take that knockout, hopefully get that double turbo and keep the engine running. When your prizes are bad, if you can get an early knockout, it's like night and day sometimes to get that key card out of the prizes and keep your attacks coming down. And Kevin is setting up pretty nicely here, able to Ultra Ball grabbing out the Gengar then quick balls it away right away that Gengar such a key part of this deck with its netherworld gate ability allowing you to place it directly onto your bench no need for ghastly or haunter here and then putting three damage counters on that Pokemon so that way you can boost the damage output of your Hisuian Zoark V-Star yeah now that um attack only works when multiple Pokemon are damaged we can move those counters around with the damage pump yes but so many ways to do it and this is a very weird list where you have to plan so far ahead. Fortunately, the Hizuian Zorark Vs are hitting the bench. And then a Crobat V. Love that new full art that we've got. Yeah, from the trainer gallery of the Lost Origin expansion. Able to fill the hand up to six. Was not able to find a Gape Jaw Bog before putting these Pokemon down. Does draw into it now and will put it into play. This is a super important card for this deck because your Zoark V-Star's damage output is dependent on how many damage counters are in play. So, Ooh, I love the, the Rangaroo. Have, have damage, damage counters, counters on yes. there from the Bog. Can now see one more card from the top of the deck. And with the Gengar now being brought back from the discard pile, we have some more damage counters available to start moving around with the damage pump. Yes. Here it is. Damage pump number one. Going to take two damage counters off of the Gengar and place one and one. A beautiful, ever so slightly damaged bench. And now we just need the Zoroark V-Star to come through. Again, two of them in the pro prizes. Yeah, two in the prizes and all the energies. And if Kevin was unable to find an energy this turn... He's going to have to find one copy of Double Turbo next turn in order to pull off an attack, and he's not able to get an energy attachment. So if he had been able to find a basic fighting or the one gift energy that he plays, that would have been a great thing to get things moving to set up for an attack next turn. But now he's just hoping to find that one single copy remaining in the deck. I know everything besides the prizes. Like yes. With, with prize oh, this vision, setup's insane. Yeah, this <laughs> setup is ridiculous. Like, if you don't know that the prizes are just not working for Kevin at all. Ryan Harris, meanwhile, enjoying the benefits of Battle VIP Pass. Just going to look at the hand real quick. Probably going to get a couple compies here. It could grab the Radiant Greninja as well if he's already got energy cards. Would love to start using that concealed yep, card to it is. see as many uh, new cards in your hand as possible. But now with, again, a Comfy being put into play, Kevin does have a target to hopefully jailbreak a Double Turbo Energy or the Hisuian Zoroark V. Just waiting patiently for his turn. Knows that there's going to be a lot of shenanigans going on on Ryan's side. Having the, you know, the, the flower selecting, switching, scoop up net, etc. We love it. We've seen people sequence through this so much. Here's the first switch, Comfy, into flower selecting number one. 
Bit of a hard choice here. Yeah, can lose the Drapion, I think, pretty freely. Not going up against Mew, so... Yeah, yeah. when I saw the Mirage Gate, I was like, oh, you really want to hold <laughs> on to that, but fortunately, yep. draws into a, a weaker card to make that choice a bit yep. easier. Absolutely. One card in the loss zone now. Needs to find a way to get three more down if he wants to attack with the Cramorant this turn. See if he has maybe access to Luminion or something like that. There is an Ultra Ball in the hand. All right, so we've got concealed cards with the Radiant Greninja. Ultra Ball can fetch the Luminion. Then this can grab the Colrus's Experiment, which is just one of the most important cards in the deck, if not the most important card in the deck. It's probably a toss-up between Comfy and Colrus as for which one is more valuable. Just the way to get cards into your Lost Zone and also see you more combo pieces to work with. Oh, yeah, and then has to put some damage down because of the That's Gate right, Jaw Bog. Yep. Good catch there, good catch there. It does work both ways. You know, stadium cards apply to both players in the Pokemon TCG. Yeah, when you when you know that Kevin Zek is much more reliant on it, you've got your eye down. But when it comes to Ryan, you know, benching these Pokemon, we have to keep those damage counters flowing. But here it is, Luminion finding the Colress. Five cards being offered. Three will go to the hand, the other two to the lost zone. That'll be three out of four for this Cramorant. And I do think I see a battle VIP pass there in the hand. Ryan does already have a decent amount of Pokemon down. Which does he want more, the VIP pass to get Pokemon or the escape rope for a switch option? It looks like he wants that VIP pass. The one turn he can play it, definitely want to grab that card. Yeah, we can try to get a couple more comfies in play, start having them work in tandem. Because, you know, this is only step one, getting the Cramorant online. But now we have to keep going further and further to hit that 7, hit that 10 for the Mirage Gate and the Requiem. So Ryan is not choosing to put down a Giratina V. He does have one in the hand, but maybe he is going for a strategy of not putting a bunch of Giratinas down and trying mm -hmm. to lean onto his one prize attackers as options more so. And because the VIP pass puts the Comfy directly from the deck into play, it doesn't take the damage from the Gape Jaw Bog That's right, there. yes. That is the fourth card into the Lost Zone now. So. Ryan can attach an energy to this Comfy and retreat it into the Greninja. Looks like he will just bench the Giratina V, so does still want to use that attacker at some point, which is, I think, wise. And now retreating into that Cramorant, which will spit innocently upon this Decidueye, throwing some damage into play for free, not having to have any energy cards attached thanks to that Lost Provisions ability. Yeah, the, the Cramorant really ties this engine all together, having this early aggression, just sending out this damage, setting up for, you know, early one or two prizes is fantastic for, you know, just paving a way for Giratina V-Star and that Star Requiem to get the final two or three prizes you might need. But back over to Kevin, we've got the Evolution Incense. This can find that Zoroark V-Star with all these damaged Pokemon on the bench. We can start maybe wailing down, start taking some prizes before Ryan gets fully set up. We've only got Giratina V in play, no energy attached to it, only four cards in the Lost Zone, no threat of Mirage Gate just yet. I think Kevin's ideal turn here would involve boss's orders, KO the Giratina V, but that is a massive ask when you have three double turbos in the prizes, and you're yeah. most likely in order to hit those double turbos are probably going to have to play a draw supporter, which means that you can't utilize boss. Now, let's not forget Zoark V-Star, in addition to doing a ton of damage, has the excellent Phantom Star V-Star power. So that is a way that Kevin could try to draw some cards and maybe hit the boss plus the double turbo. Let's see if what he goes for. Depending on what the rest of the hand is looking like, Kevin might be very uh, upset about having to discard your hand, about discarding his hand. But at the end of the day, when you know how snowbally this matchup can be in one way or the other, especially seeing Ryan's powerful setup, I think you've got to go for it. Marnie's going to be the first step, though. Yep, so, so no, no boss, boss here. Just going for the slower, more consistent setup route, which I think is quite fair and definitely more reasonable. Seeing five cards is still pretty good, and you still have that. V-Star power available. Mm. We did see a couple air balloons, though. Maybe get this uh, Decidueye out of the active spot. Yeah, it's a good way to move it. It does have two retreat. We also see the basic fighting energy. I wonder if Kevin has made note of how many energies are in his prize cards. Did he check for the double turbos? I don't think it's something you always think to check for right away, because you assume, yeah, I'll, I'll at least have a couple, even if I yeah. prize one or two. Like, that's manageable. But I prized three in this spot. That is very rare. Not very ideal. rare to hit that. 
Kevin maybe now finally recognizing that, you know, these odds are a little bit odd. What's going on here? And is not going to Phantom put Star. the fighting energy in play before using this V-Star power. Hoping to find the double turbo. Let's see if he can get it and get off an attack here. So many cards seen this turn. There it is. He finds, finds the double turbo. The one double turbo energy remaining in his deck. He did see a lot of cards, to be fair. Yeah. But yeah, that just feels really nice that you're finally able to get that one copy. Yeah, especially when you understand how much is riding on this turn. We know that this is Zui and Zorark. The entire game has to put their hopes and dreams on the back of this Pokemon right now. We've got a damage pump as well yep. to get more damage counters on that undamaged V-Star. Yep, moves one to the Gengar as well. Just moving them both off the Decidueye is pretty smart. Yeah, it, it still counts as a bit of a heal as, as well. So Cramorant is going to be able to take that knockout. Yep, yeah, takes it out of range. So really good decision from Kevin's side of the field. And, and taking wisdom. curse, as we see there, 50 for each Pokemon. It's not just on the bench, so it does count your active. Yes. Hitting those really important numbers there, up to 300. Now the big question for me here, Scarzig, does Kevin take a double turbo energy <laughs> off the prizes? He's got the 50-50. Oh, did, did he, he get double one? turbo okay. Okay, or another V-Star? He took the double turbo, so he'll have a response at least next turn. So while Kevin Kinney does take the first KO, if Ryan Harris can piece together a one-hit knockout with Giratina V-Star, I mean, this game is definitely something that can go back and forth. And there is a chance that it comes down to who takes the first V-Star knockout and is able to chain together attack after attack. Being able to have part of your deck rely on these single prize Pokemon that you know, are meant to come in, do their damage, get knocked out. Ryan Harris, it, do it doesn't feel like he's fallen too far behind. Just, you know, one Cramorant is down. This is allowing you to get the free promotion on the Comfy and now get this engine back online. We're going to see six cards now going into the Law Zone after this next flower selecting. We just need another Call Rest, and then the Mirage Gate is online. And Mirage Gate does get sent to the Lost Zone. Ryan had to choose between that and the... The basic grass energy, grass energy. Yeah. and he's already got one grass energy in the discard pile and only placed three copies of it. So I think that's why he was having a hard time kind of figuring out exactly what he wanted to do there. That is one of the uh, hardest things I think about uh, working with the lost box is because of the way your energy costs all work together. Giratina, you need to have that psychic energy in the grass energy. You want some water energy in there to maybe start threatening Moonlit Shuriken. And you have to be able to read and commit to which Pokemon and which attacks you're going to be relying on and know how many uh, energy you can in your threat. Realistically send to the Lost Zone while maintaining your threat. So capture energy will get another Giratina into play. And once again, it goes straight to the bench, so it does not need to take any damage from the Gape Jaw Bog. So Ryan mm. is not going to be getting a KO this turn. He had a Scape Rope in hand and also has a Comb Feed. Choosing not to go with that route doesn't want to, you know, maybe give Kevin a free send up. You know, if you're taking a knockout, you want it to be into this Zoark. So it will just be a pass. And boss's Ooh. orders, that is huge on Kevin's side, bringing up this Giratina. The Giratina V-Star also has an energy attached to it. We're one card in the Lost Zone away from turning on that Mirage Gate. So getting this attacker out of the way is going to let Kevin jump out ahead of this game. And by taking these early prizes like we talked about, Chip, it really course corrects how awkward the early setup was. Now finding these double turbo energies yes. to keep the chain of Zorark V-Stars in that ticking cursed coming every single turn. Yeah, I think his two prizes were Zorg V-Star and Double Turbo Energy, which, if you ask me, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and as we go back over to Ryan Harris, Ooh. here's the flower selecting. This is going to be card number seven. And it starts with the Roxanne, Oh, actually. I didn't see. Yeah. Roxanne. Yeah, okay. does play it pretty quickly na down. Now that Kevin has taken three prize cards, both players will shuffle those hands in. Ryan getting six, so making it a pretty solid draw supporter, but it also disrupts Kevin heavily, who does not have anything like Bieberel in his list. Uh, gonna be relying on a Ranguru to see additional cards after only getting two from the Roxanne. I know, only, s and just got that V-Star in the hand of the double turbo energy, and it goes right back into the deck. It's a big opening for Ryan. Ryan needs to mm -hmm. piece together a KO this turn. He needs to find the Way to get one more card in the Lost Zone. We've got that through the Active Comfy. He needs to find the Mirage Gates, the V-Star, all of the pieces. That's step one of the puzzle. 
All right, V Star, ordinary Rob. You've got to scoop up net for this comfy to get it out of the active. I think he needs a Mirage Gate here. That's one of the main things he's looking for. There is a Colress. We're down now at that magic seven mark. I think he's got to scoop up net to utilize the other comfy here. Maybe uh, are we going to discard the Grass Energy? Oh yeah, has not even used concealed cards. Yeah. I think he's holding off because he wants to potentially yeah. attach it. So And these comfies, yeah, with the flower selecting, they can keep finding switches and things to keep cycling them over and over. Battle VIP pass, making these choices very easy for Ryan. Eight cards now in the lost zone. I don't think he got a Mirage Gate, though. Yeah, it just goes for the manual attachment. Ooh, this is an interesting card he has in the deck, the Temple of Sinnoh. Turning oh off my the goodness. special energy of all Pokemon. They do still provide one colorless, but if Kevin doesn't have a response stadium, he needs to find another energy to put on this Zork because it's only providing one energy. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, you comes know, through. there we go. <laughs> Get that temple out of here. I'm still swinging with my Zork. Yeah, that was very close. We've seen Temple of Sin Sinnoh really, really punish a lot of decks in the past. And Primate Wisdom, I'm going to put one card on top. See, one more from the top. Is it a supporter? An energy? A gift energy is actually a pretty nice grab because now if this active goes down, Ryan would uh, activate that and that would give Kevin a little bit of draw power. Now, yeah, actually, all the way back up to seven, yeah. I, I think gift energy actually only activates, though, if you get knocked out by damage from an attack, Ooh. which is really interesting because Star Requiem doesn't do damage. It just knocks the Pokemon out. So. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, interesting edge interactions with, you know, the Pokemon sidestepping the Gape Jaw Bog. And now Ryan with the chance to maybe sidestep the gift energy. Yeah, needs one more card in the lost zone to pull that playoff. He's sitting at nine right now. One more to activate the yep. lost Requiem. Yeah, and gift energy, sure enough, says attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack. So even though the Zorark would be knocked out, it is not by damage. It is by the effect. But And Ryan giving Kevin a taste of his own medicine here. Ooh, I think Ryan maybe played this boss a little preemptively. Or something Wait, like that? Yeah, because yeah. the, the Roxanne was last turn. Yeah. So the boss is, is legal. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the question was. Maybe Ryan was wanting to not play the boss. He has Colrus in hand as well, but did go with the boss's order, so that gets brought up. And I think that might be what the situation was. Ryan oh. sees that he can't quite close this one out. A little bit of a slow start. Couldn't quite pull off the Giratina attack. And he'll lose this first one. Kevin Whew. taking the win with Hisui and Zor. It was looking a little rough. He started the Radiant Greninja, which is good. And he's got energy in hand. But I think a little too much energy. See if he can get things going a little bit. Yeah, four energy cards in this opening hand. Oof. Starting with the concealed cards right away into two VIP pass and Let's has go. another one as well. Now the setup is complete. One of the two Cramorant is also in the prizes, but the battle VIP pass is going to let you work around that very oh easily. Get the comfy gosh. and the, well, here it is. Just all yeah. three of them played out, three of a kind. Time to search and fill up this bench. What's the spread? Two comfy, a Cramorant, two Giratina, or are we just going four comfy here? I don't think we're quite going to go for the four <laughs> comfy. That one Cramorant is in the hand, so that makes things a little awkward. If you want to mm -hmm. utilize that, you probably actually only get four Pokemon here, unless you're trying to work in some scoop up nets. Oh, the Oranguru? But it will actually just be the Guru, nice. the double Tina, and the double comfy. And Ryan's sitting with an air balloon in hand, so that can move this Greninja out of the active. And what looked like a pretty weak start has turned into a pretty good one. Mm hmm. And the one air balloon as well means that, you know, normally you like to attach this to your Ranguru because you can scoop up the uh, Greninja and recycle that ability. Right, so right. it might be a little bit oh. awkward later on, but with an effect that is this strong, uh, with a setup this good, I don't think you're, you're fine to give up that air balloon. What are yeah, we seeing here? I, I think Ryan was going quickly with his flower selecting and accidentally picked up the second card there on, or the third card on top of the deck and maybe got a peek of it. And Did we get a shuffle yeah. as well after the VIP passes? Yeah, we did get a shuffle after the VIP passes. That was all good and fine, but I'm pretty sure that we're getting a, a judge call being done here. Yeah, it looks like the judge will shuffle the deck and we'll get confirmation, but this is most likely going to be a two prize card penalty from Ryan for seeing an extra card. That's really unfortunate, especially when you're down a game in mm -hmm. these sets. Every single prize matters, and you have such a great start with the triple VIP pass, yeah, but it's judges, kind of nullified yeah. by, by that, uh, that prize penalty. Mm -hmm. The judges have been really good about catching these little slip-ups here and there, some unfortunate cards being revealed, and 
we'll see if the trend continues, if they're going to, you know, maybe give a warning or something here. But yeah, we'll see what well, happens. It is, of course, up to their discretion. And the penalty is awarded. We're seeing it now on the screen chip. Yeah. Two prizes less for Kevin to take this game. A huge blow. It really does make a big difference. Every single little action like that, you got to be real careful. These sleeves can get a little sticky. And I, I think Ryan was moving a little quickly there. And that's a, just unfortunate without a doubt. Yeah, I, need, I mean, you're trying to sequence, get all your setup completed. Make sure you have enough time to actually play out the third game if you do win game number two. Right. And now the buffer you have in the early stages of the game where Cramorant sprinkling some damage but then getting knocked out in response. Maybe an errant Comfy is bossed up and maybe taken down. Ryan no longer has that buffer and needs to immediately accelerate. We'll see if there's going to be some incredible flower selecting chains and maybe a call rest to get the uh, <laughs> the Mirage Gate up here on the next turn. Meanwhile, Kevin needs to still complete the setup, is able to discard that Gengar as Very well nice. using the Netherworld Gate to come through a little bit later on. Does find another Hisuian Zoark V. Can get that into the hands. We'll see if he has the Gape Jaw Bog this time mm -hmm. in order to get that damage or if he'll have to kind of maneuver that with the damage pump potentially. Oh, a bunch of damage pump in this opening hand. That's actually pretty awkward. Uh, fortunately, with the Gengar, we can get the damage spread around with the damage pump. Sure. But now we it's just about getting this all in play, trying to get the uh, Zorark V-Star and the prizes all ready to go. There is one double turbo in the prizes. So, hey, that's only one. That's within reason, Chip. Sure. <laughs> now we can actually, you know, fish the other ones out of the deck, respectively, hopefully. So seven cards off of Professor's Research. Pretty nice. Let's see if there is an option to get more basic Pokemon down. There's really nothing for Kevin to set up in this deck as far as like a Bidoof, Bibarel line, anything like that, which we have seen being played by some Hisuian Zoark players. Mm -hmm. It's just really kind of straightforward. He's got Crobat and Luminion and Eldegoss is all draw outs eventually. For now, we'll just attach to the active and we might be seeing a Void Return Pretty solid attack here from the Hisuian Zoark. Don't even need any energies attached at all in order to use it. And it deals 30 damage, and you may just send it to the bench for free, which is pretty solid. Overall, very nice. A little bit of utility, a little bit of agility, right, with this deck. You can switch something up into the active, let it get some damage counters, maybe put onto it from the opponent's uh, return attack, and then spread those counters around with more damage pumps. Ultra Ball going to discard the boss's orders in Acheron's care. Could go for a Crobat to try and draw more cards here, potentially. He also does play one copy of Diancy, so we could see that being grabbed. Princess's the Diancy Curtain is, its ability. Yeah, that one's actually Ooh, in the prizes, okay, okay. unfortunately. But that Princess's Curtain is nice, basically essentially nullifying boss's orders, right. allow, giving you much more time to complete your setup and protect those uh, things like Oranguru and whatnot that might be vulnerable on the bench. It's less worrisome to get it down in a matchup like this. It would be great to get down against a Mew VMAX deck or yeah. a, a Palkia deck, something that can pretty aggressively target a two-prize Pokemon. It's pretty hard for Ryan to ever get to the point where he's knocking out a V Pokemon on the bench this coming turn. So yeah. it will just be the Oranguru grabbed, Primate Wisdom gets used, and Void Return sends this Gengar to the active. Just a, a great... Pokemon that you can just promote. If it goes to the discard pile, if it gets knocked out, you can just bring it right back, get more damage counters into your rotation as you prepare for that ticking curse. Now with Ryan, we've got the flower selecting, being very careful now. Giratina being offered alongside the Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah, Temple seems like it could be good in this matchup, but well, he will choose to hang on to it, try to just slow down Kevin as much as possible. I guess it is a safe bet to assume that your opponent doesn't have a Gape Jaw Bog because they likely would have put it down before benching the Oranguru. So mm -hmm. maybe you can slow them down with the tempo. Gets offered a Psychic Energy. This is a little bit more important to keep in this matchup. There is four in the list, but you still need them to set up your Giratinas. Decides to send it to the Lost Zone anyway. That Ordinary Rod is just a little bit too uh, important you know, getting the Comfies back or maybe Cramorants or something. So Ryan will only have two Psychic Energies left. He plays four copies, so he's got to be super, super protective of yes. those energies, very mindful of when they come down. And now with this being put into play on a Giratina V, Ultra Ball to find another Giratina V star, perhaps. Needs to get this evolution, a little bit of extra HP to protect from the Azuian Zoroark V star, hunting it down. 
like we saw in game number one, Kevin Kenny had that boss's orders and was able to get the knockout before the Giratina V-Star was properly established. And with this board being full, Ryan just chooses to ditch the Cramorant. Not going to try and bench that back down and get a KO on the Gengar here, which I think it would get that knockout. I'm pretty sure the Gengar only has 120 hit points. So Spit Innocently would have been a way to get a prize this turn, but now Ryan is just going to use Primate Wisdom, and I don't think we're going to be seeing that happen. And yeah, just passes it back over to Kevin, hoping to pull off something next turn, but this is a massive opening. Yeah, with... Ryan, you want to buy yourself as much time as possible to get your Lost Zone filled up, get your setup complete, but with this double prize penalty as well, Kevin is more than happy to just attach, retreat, keep swinging in, doing whatever's necessary to get set up here. Primate Wisdom Find placing Luminion. a card on top. So that Luminion will hit the discard pile mm. alongside the Marnie from this professor's research. And now with the research, of course, after the Primate Wisdom, you get your card right back. Yes, yeah, so it's something that Kevin wanted to hold on to for the other end of this research. Really smart decision there. Does lose the Luminion, which is a little bit of a bummer, but we do see that Ordinary Rod in hand. So that's an option to put that key resource back into the deck at some point if you want it. And we'll see how Kevin navigates this, right? You're looking again for your for your V-Stars, obviously. Maybe a way to get this uh, Gengar. Is that is just it, a pass? I think it Nothing is. Nothing good off of the research. Okay, that is a really bad whiff from Kevin's side. That was a huge potential turn for him. We'll just pass it over to Ryan, who now... He's the one sitting in uh, a position where he could have a really big turn. And yeah, I love the I love the primate wisdom happen. into the flower selecting. Yes. You say, I don't like this card. I don't need this. I can put it onto the deck to make sure it goes into the lost zone. Keep my other. We're up to four now. Still a long ways to go before we get to Mirage Gate. Flower selecting number two of the turn. There is the Mirage Gate. But yeah, like you said, still a little ways away and does not find a Colrus's experiment. That is a card that has really eluded Ryan. It feels like in this match so far, just not able to get that really important supporter card up and running too often. I like this decision. There's a Mirage Gate already in the hand. Decides to keep the capture energy so we can get the discard for uh, concealed cards. Uh, two ordinary rods in the hand. We see capture energy, Temple of Sinnoh. Quick ball, I mean, there is just... Yeah, the payoff cards are in the hand, but we need more resources to fill up the Lost Zone. The Colres MIA, deep in the underground secret lab experimenting. Yes, there is nothing happening here on Ryan's side. He could attach an energy to the Giratina and have it all the way powered up, but you can't even retreat the Comfy. So we'll see that tempo hit the field. Try to slow things down. Kevin can no longer retreat this. Gengar does have two retreats, so that temple now makes that uh, energy just one single energy. Oh, and Ryan, I think, has accidentally played the Mirage Gate. There's only five cards in his no, Lost no, no. Zone. This, oh, no, yes, he yes. Did, oh, no. All right, that's just going to be a... No yeah, it, it depends on if he picked up the deck and looked at it or not. If he didn't see the deck, it's kind of a quick little catch there from Kevin and no problem. But if Ryan saw the deck, we could be in a situation where we see another penalty. Oh, I was I was looking down towards the Gengar. After the Temple of Sinnoh hit, I was looking down towards the Double Turbo. I didn't see the okay. Mirage Gate hit the uh, top right corner. Oh, and is the judge going to shuffle the deck again? Yeah, that makes me think that Ryan must have seen... <laughs> Uh, something there potentially that is definitely a bummer and he's already gotten a prize penalty once in this game for and revealing an extra card unintentionally an unintentional search of the deck carries the same penalty seeing cards that you're not supposed to does equal a two prize card penalty i mean both of these players are trying to lock in their day two spot 18 minutes left in the round you've already oh taken a goodness. prize yeah. penalty you're down a game, I can definitely see so many factors stacking against Ryan, and, and you're trying to find a way out of this corner. You try to go for Mirage Gate, and you realize that that is not available. Attach on the Capture Energy, Ryan making absolutely sure that this is legal. Yeah, Capture Energy, the bench is full, and the Temple of Sinnoh is in play, so you don't search the deck with the Capture. Yeah, I'm just making sure everything is all good there. Yeah, I was maybe thinking that, can I attach this? Do I still have to shuffle? 
Yeah, the temple is shutting it down anyway, mm -hmm. right? And that's exactly. what Kevin's pointing out. And yeah, the four red Pokeballs there indicating how many prize cards Kevin needs to take. Just two prizes. So if Kevin can piece together a boss's orders onto the Giratina V on the bench and then find a way to get just a little more damage in play, we could just see the game end on one single knockout. A lot of work still needs to be done, though. No uh, V-Star in play. The Zoark still MIA. Kevin has the Oranguru to see a little bit more. He's got a decent amount of cards in hand. It's kind of hard to believe that there's nothing working for him here. Yeah, he's holding that hand just a little bit out of frame. I'm trying to get eyes on it, Chip. Yep. And Ooh. finds the Eldegoss. Okay. Happy match. That ability allowing you to pick up a supporter card from your discard pile. Professor's Research being the grab. So we won't see Kevin win the game this turn, but he doesn't have to win the game this turn. He uh, has plenty of turns here to get set up and try to just establish a situation. True. He never has to knock out a Giratina. He can just go knock out Comfy, knock out something else. And a Comfy, Greninja, a Rangaru, or a Giratina. It just doesn't matter. This is really, really tough for Ryan in this position. Kevin just needing to do so little. Especially from game number one, where everything was riding on that first uh, Hazui and Zorark V star to be the main attacker. Now that we have more double turbos in rotation, we have the V stars in the deck. Eldegoss comes through, we've got Professor's Research. As soon as that first uh, Zorark comes through, we do have that uh, star power as well to just draw yes. even more cards as well. So Professor's Research discarding the hand, drawing seven. I'm pretty sure the Oranguru put a double turbo energy on top of the deck. Kevin waiting to see what is drawn into here before deciding where to put that down. Yeah, just needs to find the rest of the puzzle. I did glimpse an Ultra Ball there as well, so we can get our evolution here. Could grab the evolution that, of course, can draw more cards like you mentioned. We could even see an interesting situation where Kevin puts two double turbo energies on a Hasuian Zoark and they have no damage reduction <laughs> being done, uh, but it's two double turbos attached. So we'll see what happens here. That's what you'd have to do with the Temple of Sinnoh in play because otherwise this Zoark cannot attack as of now. Yeah, Phantom Star. That was the ability I was trying to remember the name of. But uh, Ultra Ball does indeed come through after finding that V-Star naturally. This can grab the other V-Star out of the deck. We also could see this get Crobat potentially. And is that, that <laughs> the Luminion yeah, going back discarded down? discarded again. <laughs> Luminion gets back into the deck and then sent back to the discard pile. Poor Luminion. Yeah, the rest of the hand is just way too good. And that's definitely a, a scary thing to be seeing if you're on Ryan's side of the table. Your opponent's hand is so good that they're losing a supporter and a Luminion. They are definitely planning to dump this hand with the Phantom Star and just keep on churning. Mm -hmm. There's two Gengar in the list. One's now in the active. We still want to try to fish up that next one, get it discarded to just play into these damage pumps, right? No Gape Jaw Bog as well. So as the Eldegoss has been benched, uh, there's still not enough damage being spread around. Yeah, this does make things pretty awkward for Kevin. And any time I've played this deck, this has also been one of yeah. the problems that I have found with it, <laughs> where you have all these Pokemon down, but you just cannot find your Gape Jaw Bogs in the right order. And, uh, I mean, Kevin has seen so many cards this game so far and just still no Stadium card. He does play the full four copies of it. Where are they? And still figuring out how to sequence this turn. Here is Crobat V. Even more card draw, drawing five cards now with the Dark Asset. Hasn't used Phantom Star yet. So much of the deck being drawn. Where are your damage pumps? This is another Pokemon that gets <laughs> away, gets down to the bench with no Gape Jaw Bog. There's the Gape Jaw finally, but Kevin has a full bench. He will still be able to get Taking the KO. Taking curse for 180. Yeah, it was still, still enough to, to get the KO here on the poor little 70 HP Comfy. I guess that's all that we really care about from this point, Chip, is, as you said, we don't have to jump through a lot of hoops with nope. such a big buffer. Just take a single prize knockout, get another single prize knockout. Is there enough energy? Yeah, he bumped the, the Sinnoh. I was yes, yeah. For a second there, but yeah, he bumped oh, the yeah. Temple of Sinnoh, so Double Turbo is back online. We can indeed attack there. Radiant Greninja is promoted to the active, has the air balloon on it from way earlier in the game, so we can pivot off of this. I don't even know if there's an energy card to use concealed cards with in the hand just yet. We have that Mirage Gate, which cannot be played. The Comfy is on the bench, so that is a way to get a card, at least one more card in the Lost Zone. 
But here's a good way to get to. Use that Lumineon, fetch out the Chorus's Experiment. This will send two cards down, and Mirage Gate will finally be online for Ryan in this match. And then, of course, it gets some damage on it from the Gape Jaw Bog. Yeah, yes. see, Ryan is the one taking up all the damage now with the Gape Jaw Bog. <laughs> So five cards here, Tool Jammer, one of them. I think that seems like a pretty reasonable discard. I guess it could be a decent way to try to withstand a hit, and hit against Zoark, but Rock I mean, Sand Zoark just does so much damage. I, I think it's pretty hard to, to worry about that. Yeah, the Rock Sand actually having prizes taken that's versus taken versus true. prizes needed to end the game uh, means it's going to be a dead card. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that the prizing penalties have changed that. It actually used to work in the way whenever you got a prize penalty, you just took the prizes. Uh. But because of cards like Roxanne and back in the time when that ruling changed in, they actually had to change how it worked because you could, you know, your opponent could get awarded prize penalties, take those prize cards, and then you just play in right away to put them to less cards in hand. Ugh, terrible. We are finally seeing the Mirage Gate, though. Mirage Gate up and running. We've got energy coming out of the deck onto the Giratina V. <laughs> and when Mirage Gate does finally get up and running, it is just for one energy. Things just, I mean, this is just a game of things not going Ryan Harris's way at all. It's better to get it out of the way now. You've already got five wins. Just take another shot at getting your day two. Not a big deal. At least we're getting a decent idea of how this list can function and yep. a nice showcase of Hasui and Zoark V-Star. Um, even though this list takes a lot of time to spin up and get online, it works at about the same pace as we can see as a Lost Box. So Kevin needs to find a boss's orders here. If he can do that, he'll be able to bring up the Comfy and take the KO, dealing just enough damage. It doesn't look like he's used his V-Star power yet this game. That Luminion did go down, so that would have been an easy way to close things out but we'll see if he's able to find the boss and just finish up this game. I think he did discard a boss last turn as well, so there might, I think, only be one left in the deck. Yeah, Evolution Incense going to thin a little bit more. Kevin gets a way to look at the remainder of the deck, maybe start calculating these odds. Is the Phantom Star going to be enough? Ultra Ball going to thin down a little bit more. Yeah, I think just trying to get every last piece out of the deck that is not boss's orders. Everything that you don't want to draw into, every way that you can find to try to close out the game this turn. You don't have to win this turn. Once again, you know, we've <laughs> said it, Kevin, you know, has, yeah. I, I mean, I guess you do need to win in the next two turns because otherwise Ryan is putting, threatening Star Requiem this coming turn into the um, mm -hmm. 280 damage, just big one hit knockout. So Ultra Ball into a whiff, into the Quick Ball, just thinning the hand down. Finds another Crobat V. That's right. I forgot there was actually two of them in this list. And that's why we saw so many of those ball cards being played, the Quick Balls and the Ultra Balls, the Evolution Incense getting nothing just because Kevin wanted to thin this hand size down as much as absolutely possible. So that is the Dark Asset coming through. Even an Energy Attachment to fully empty the hand, drawing six now. Kevin can see six cards off Dark Asset. He's also got... The Phantom Star, V-Star power as well. Only needing boss's orders to close out this game. I don't see it here in this hand. You got to think he would have slammed it pretty quickly. Damage pump to move the counters around from the Gape Jaw Bog. We actually have uh, 24. No, six, almost. We need a little bit more. That's the that's the token on the Ranguru, not a damage counter. Yes, yeah. Need a little bit more in order to move. Uh, and there's actually no way for Kevin to put more damage counters into play this turn. His bench is full, so you mm -hmm. can't be benching anything. There's no scoop up nets or anything like that. And everything has one damage counter on it. So damage pump wouldn't do you any good. Yep, and so Phantom Star to draw seven more. Oh, and it's the whole deck. So as long as Kevin has the boss's orders, yes, can bring up a Comfy and take it out only needing to take two prizes to only win needing to draw the game. through the entire deck <laughs> to win the game expertly thinning down right with the dark asset as well to guarantee that you draw all the way through